My mom wouldn't give me my diploma because I didn't give her a rose. I had a weird upbringing in a cult that I have tried to explain a couple of times, but it is so complicated that I couldn't get it concise enough and I had to erase it. I think I'll just stick to this one story for now, and if you want to hear more about what my family believed, you can ask me any questions you can have, and I can answer your them in the comments. Even so, this is going to be a long, crazy story, so brace yourself. My mum was what's known as a covert narcissist. That's where they are super sweet and wonderful whenever someone else is around, but at home, their true colours rip through their mask and they demand that the world revolve around them. Part of what we believed required our family to have as many children as possible, and as the oldest daughter, it was my job to take care of them all. I meal planned, cooked, cleaned, and even homeschooled my younger siblings, all while trying to get through my own school books by myself. My mum wouldn't let me study unless all the other housework was done first, so consequently, I was behind a lot. I got good grades in everything except math, and one of my tutors even told me I had a talent for a particular career, but I told her our religion didn't believe in women working outside the home, but thanked her for her compliment. When it came time for me to graduate high school, our church organised a group of us homeschooled kids who were all graduating at the same time, and put together a ceremony like the ones regular schools have. I was very involved for the first few months. I illustrated a cookbook we were selling, and went to all the fundraisers. But after a while, I decided I didn't agree with a lot of what the group was doing, and asked my parents if I could pull out of the project and just have a small ceremony at home like we had always talked about. They both heard my reasons and agreed, saying they were proud of my maturity and willingness to stand alone for what was right. The day of the graduation came, and we went to support our friends. During the ceremony, each student gave their mother a rose and a hug on stage, and it was super sweet. I had no reason to believe there was anything wrong until we got home. My mum immediately called me back into her room. My dad was standing there, but... He wasn't really the leader in our house, so he didn't say anything the whole time. My mom told me she was humiliated when she saw all the other mothers got roses, and I cheated her out of the honour and recognition she deserved for teaching me everything I know. Her exact words were, A graduation ceremony is not about the students. It's about the teachers and how hard they worked to get those students where they are today. I didn't dare contradict her, but in my head I was thinking, what are you talking about? You haven't been my teacher since I was 11. She would always just buy me books and that was it. I had to find time to read them, take tests, and grade myself all on my own. She would even make me take tests over and over again until I got an A. With math, that was a lot of trying and failing. I didn't even know the real cutoff of failing a test was a D until I got married and moved out. At the time of this conversation, I still had a couple chapters in my last math book I needed to finish, but a lot of my other homeschool friends said they had the same thing and that it was normal. My mum finished by saying, I just looked at your math book and you still have two chapters left to go, so you haven't even earned this yet. Since you denied me the honour, I deserved tonight. I will be withholding your diploma also. You don't even need it, since you won't be going to college. Just finish your book and you will just be done with school. I tried to remind her that she agreed to let me sit out of the graduation ceremony, but she said, I know I did, but when I saw how all the other mothers were being honoured like that, I realised that wasn't your decision to make, and I felt robbed. It wasn't about you. It was about me as both your mother and your teacher. I asked her to at least not tell anyone that I didn't have a diploma, and she said that she always said when I asked that kind of thing, if you don't want people to know what you did, then don't do it. She dismissed me, and I ran to my room and cried. I was embarrassed and worried about what my friends would think if they found out, but I couldn't stay in my room for very long, because my mum soon noticed I was gone and called me back downstairs to make dinner. She never approved of anyone being emotional. I went the next 12 years carefully guarding my secret that I didn't have a diploma, and even my husband didn't know until one day my dad called me. He and my mum had gotten a divorce, 
when she left him and all my siblings for another man that year. After the drama settled, my whole family was a lot happier without my mum around, and my dad had been going through all the old files, getting everything in order for their new, free life, when he found something he thought I would like to have. It was my diploma and my high school transcript. He sent me a picture of them both, and I just broke down crying right there on the phone. He apologised for not standing up for me back then, and I told him I understood and forgave him. My mum abused him too, and he was just trying to get through life like all of us. He couldn't accept that. He said, as my dad, it was his job to protect me, and he failed. We had a long talk about all the things my mum did to me, and I was surprised to hear that my dad was largely unaware of most of them. He got really angry on the phone, and kept apologising for not being more aware and present in my life. He was in the military, so he was gone a lot. It was a wonderful talk, and we both cried a ton. He sent me the diploma and the transcript in the mail, and I cried again when I finally held them in my hands. I used them to get a job last year at a daycare, and it felt amazing. Our next story was posted by user join underscore the con underscore. Titled, Entitled Mum Uses Her Daughter to Scam Me for Cheap Pizza. While working at a pizza place in Los Angeles, I had a customer come in with her younger daughter, probably around 8 to 11 years old. They had balloons and other birthday paraphernalia. First thing the mother says is that it's her daughter's birthday today. I said happy birthday to the daughter, who replied with, thank you, but it was actually Friday. The mum had a kind of nervous look on her face, but quickly took it off. I didn't see this as a red flag, but it was definitely strange. They look over the menu for a minute or two and placed their order. It was roughly $100 worth of food. The mum then asks if we can deliver to a nearby park where they would be having the birthday party. This is also strange, as people usually place delivery orders over the phone, but this had happened a couple of times before, so I didn't think much of it. Once it comes time for payment, the mum asks if we have any specials or sales. The pizza place is popular and relatively high-end, so we rarely offer any kind of discounts for non-regulars. I told her, no, we don't have any kind of discounts. She gave me a reluctant, okay, and asked for the price. I told her the price, and she tried to haggle with me. I told her that I couldn't lower the price, and she kept insisting that I had a better deal on the food that I should give her. Eventually, I gave up, and said that I would give her 10% off, which is our friends and family discount. She then asked for 25% off. I told her no, and that she could take the 10% or leave, and she left. The whole thing was weird, but we had to deal with scammers once in a while. I've never had someone try to haggle me before, but this isn't the weird part. About 10 minutes after this all went down, the young daughter comes inside alone, and holding a smartphone out. The daughter comes up to me and asks if they can get more than their 10% off their order. I noticed that the mum was on the speakerphone with her. That's why she had the phone out in her hand. The mum was listening to the conversation. She sent her daughter in, hoping that I would feel bad for the kid and give them a discount. I definitely felt bad for the daughter. She must have been so embarrassed, and it made me furious. I leaned in closer to the phone so that the tramp of the mum could hear me and said, I can't give you a discount, and it's kind of awful that your mum is doing this. Unlike your mum, you seem like a really nice and sweet girl. How would you like a free slice of pizza? And I showed her all the slices that we had available, hoping she would feel better. And then she says that she doesn't really like pizza. This only further confirmed that the mum is a trashy piece of crap who used her daughter to scam us for cheap pizza. My blood boiled. How can anyone be that trashy? And for God's sake, don't get your kid involved in your little scheme. Anyways, I then offered the daughter a free soda. She didn't accept. I offered her a bottle of water. She didn't accept. Eventually, I just told her that she was really nice, and she should never do what her mum is doing. I wish I had the chance to speak with the mum alone so I could tell her she's a piece of crap, and she should go frick herself. I just hope that the daughter doesn't grow up to be like her mum. Side note, thank God for the honesty of little kids. If I believed that little girl had actually had a birthday that day, I maybe would have given them a big discount. 
and freaked that mum for putting in so much work and making her daughter lie. Our next story was posted by user Tem Reddit, titled EA thinks she can take my Switch because I won't let her brat play on it. Hi everyone reading this. This is my first entitled parent story and I hope you like it. I'm not English so my grammar's bad. So this happened one day ago, I have a Nintendo Switch. This will be important later. My auntie and her son, who was 7 years old, decided to come over to us. Everything was going fine until the demon child sees my Switch. Our cast are me, demon brat, entitled aunt, and my mum. So demon brat goes to me, Oh my god, you got a Nintendo Switch? Yeah, I got a cup, and I get cut off by the demon brat. Do you have Fortnite? Oh boy, get ready. No, I don't play Fortnite. What? Not sure how to answer, so I just stay quiet until he says something. It's free, you can download it, it's real good. I know it's free, I just don't play that garbage. The devil brat makes a I hate you facial expression, but then he starts smiling like an idiot again. Please, can you get it just for me? Ah, <sighs> fine. So I start the download, and one minute in, Devil Brat is impatient. Let me play already! It's downloading, mate. You're probably just lying so I can't play. So I stay quiet, and Devil Brat starts talking about how good Fortnite is, and I should change my mind. Three minutes in. That's it! I'm gonna tell my mum you won't let me play. <laughs> okay then. So he storms downstairs, and comes back with his mum. And she says to me, Why wouldn't you let my son play? It's downloading, mate. It's gonna take two more minutes. Liar? Well, would you just stop lying and let him play? I'm already ticked off at this, and I say, I'm not lying! And I get cut off again. Well, you could just give him the console as a gift, since he's younger than you. No! I'm not giving your son my console as a gift. And the devil brat starts crying. Look what you've done. I'm gonna be talking with your mother about this. EA turns around, and surprise, surprise, my mum heard and saw all of it, and she says, Get. Out. So they got out of my house, with DB crying, and EA screaming that she'll call the police on us for harassment. She didn't. I lost 13 minutes of my life. 5 to downloading garbage, 8 to get rid of the entitled aunt and demon brat. Edit. Nope, that's a lie. I'm not sure how much time it took. <laughs> what? And our next story was posted by user Imaginary Broccoli 6 titled, Which would you choose? Bail out your entitled aunt or bail out your vehicle? Alright, many people requested this, so here's another story of my entitled aunt. Just so you know, this isn't the worst. I mean, yes, she committed federal crime, but this isn't the beginning, so expect multiple posts. A little backstory of my auntie. She is very entitled. Our relationship was strained after she revealed a very private conversation between the two of us, and it led to a big fight. One thing about her is that she is very impatient. Her impatience has always led to trouble. This one time really made things difficult, but easily one of the most easiest decisions I have ever made. So, several months ago, I needed to print my research paper about fabrics for my fashion class. My auntie insisted in joining me, even though I warned her that the printing would take about half an hour. She said she can wait that long, since she had nothing to do. She has kids, but they were in school. So I reluctantly agreed for her to join. We arrived at the print shop, and I told my auntie to wait in the car, which was my first mistake. I went in, and the clerk told me it would take 45 minutes, as the research paper had over 120 pages. I called my auntie and told her it would take 45 minutes. She screamed at me saying, You said it was 30 minutes! I can't wait that long! You said you had nothing to do! I told you it might take long! You didn't have to come! Ugh, you do this all the time! Get it done now! And I hang up. Now, some of you might ask why I didn't just drive her back. Well, the print shop was really crowded, and it's like a dry cleaners with the number ticket and such. My number was 31, and the number displayed was 25. There were at least 50 or 60 people in there, and there was no way to drive off, because I'll lose my place. About 10 minutes in, my auntie calls again. Are you done yet? <laughs> no. How much longer? 
Well, about 30 minutes. Ah, fine. She hangs up. Not even five minutes, she called me again. Where are you? It hasn't even been five minutes yet, mate. Let's go now. I can't, it's not even my turn. I don't care, drive me back or else. No, if you won't. Watch me. I had to run out, but it was too late. My auntie drove my car away at full speed. So after that and the printing done, I called an Uber and headed home. As soon as I came back home, my mother and stepdad asked where the entitled auntie is. And goes, my mum says to me, Hey son, where's entitled aunt? Oh, she took my car and when she didn't want to wait, I told her it will take 45 minutes and she was annoying me. Stepdad goes pale. Son, you know entitled aunt doesn't have a license. Hmm. <laughs> No, I didn't know that. She said she did have one. I knew she didn't have one. Any idiot wouldn't already notice a fake ID if it's her handiwork. SD, my stepdad, says, She's incapable of driving. I'm going to call uncle and he'll put an APB on entitled auntie into your car. I was giggling like a schoolgirl for the rest of the night. The next morning came, and while my stepdad was out running a quick errand, he left his phone. It is not uncommon, he leaves his phone all the time. And I got a call from the police station. Hello, is Stepdad available? Oh, no, this is his son, OP. Ah, so I take it, uh, you own this car then? What? We got a call about an APB put on your car, as one of your family members took it, right? It's come to my attention she doesn't hold a driver's license, correct? She said she did. I saw her card. Yes, well, we saw that. Unfortunately, it's fake. You can bail her out, but you would have to pay her an undisclosed amount to get her out, as what she did is a federal offence. As for my car? Oh, you can pick it up with the payment of less, which is an undisclosed amount. Okay, I'll come pick her up. I told my mom what happened and she gave me the money. I went to the police station, an entitled aunt was there in a cage waiting for me. OP, oh my god, thank god you're here, save me! Do you have what I need? Yes, here it is. I paid and left. What did I bail out? Of course, my car. My mum said to let her suffer, so she gave me the money to bail out my car instead of her. She was released a few weeks later, but was given a harsh warning, and also not being able to make her license for the next five years. She wasn't fined as she admitted fault. Our next story was posted by a user, Bluelin, titled, My parents were entitled to their names, my siblings and I were not. So I posted this in Just No Mother-in-Law, but maybe y'all will like it. My parents were abusive and honestly tried to pretend they didn't even have kids. Even as infants, we were left on our backs in a crib. It got so bad that our skulls became flat for how long we laid there, starving, dehydrated, dirty, laying in our own filth, while my parents stuffed their faces full of food. My parents never called my siblings by their names. I can't remember one time my parents even said their names. They pretend that they didn't exist, unless they were abusing them or they had to prove to my nana that they weren't dead. My parents never called me by my name. They gave a stupid nickname, nowhere near my actual name. This ran into problems, as when I was in school, I didn't know my actual name, which ran into problems when the police were called on me. I would take till second grade, and when I was eight to nine years old, to figure out my actual name. Our next story was posted by user Luna Stardust Zero, titled Karen and Oreos. So I work in a grocery store. I see entitled parents and entitled people all the time. So naturally, I have several stories. This one though, holy frick, did I keep Karen 2.0? I work at the customer service desk, and boy, could I see this lady is ticked before she's ever at the desk. I'm watching her walk into the store. Her son, around four to five, sitting in the top of the cart with a bag in his lap. Let me note that he is eating whatever is in the bag. This is a very important detail in just a moment. Karen comes over and rips the bag out of her son's hands, and he's now sobbing, and physically throws the bag and its contents at me. Karen says, I'm returning these. They're mostly broken like someone purposely threw them on the ground. So I say to her, do you have the receipt? It's in the bag. Now, this entire time her son is crying and saying how he wants his cookies back. 
Inside the bag with the receipt is a family-sized pack of lemon Oreos. They look like they're mostly broken in half with about half a sleeve empty. I say, is there any other problem with them? Just broken? Hmm. If I'm going to buy Oreos, I don't want them broken. You should get your staff to stack them nicer. Of course, blaming my staff, who I have no control over since I am not a manager. Look, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'll give you the money. So I run the cookies through as a refund, give her the $4 the Oreos were, and tie the bag of the broken cookies up. Since we cannot resell them, I'm going to throw them out. This is when Karen goes absolutely berserk. What are you doing with those? My son wants his cookies back. Me, obviously confused. You returned them saying they were broken. If you want another pack, you'll have to buy them off the shelf. No, my son is hungry now. Those lines are too long for me to wait in for a package of cookies. I had all four lines open. Three of the four were standing around, talking, or the fourth was finishing up her order. Yeah, too long my butt. I'm sorry? I'm still confused, and Karen looks at me like she's about to hop over the counter and rip the cookies from my hands. Give me the cookies back. My son was eating those and still wants them. I'm starting to shake and feel anxiety start to kick in. I hate being yelled at, and especially when she's doing nothing but giving me attitude and yelling at me. I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't do that. If you want them, you'll have to pay for them. Listen, my son is hungry. Give me the damn cookies. You're just going to throw them out anyways. Why can't my son have them? You told me you didn't want these cookies, so I returned them. Because you returned them, I can no longer allow you to have them. You can buy another pack off the shelf. Thank God for my office manager coming out from her desk. She was listening to this entire thing unfold and stepped in before Karen could have another go at me. And she says, Ma'am, everything she is doing is correct. You didn't want them, so procedure is to toss the product if it's open. You can buy a new bag of cookies if you want for your son, but you handed over this one, so we cannot give it back. Karen was about to go off, but storms off with her crying son. On the way out of the store, she shouts about how we're making her son starve because we are denying him food. Blah, blah, blah. The store manager comes over and is asking what is going on. My office manager explains everything while I went to calm down in her office. Now, my store manager is the kind of guy that he doesn't want customers to leave or write horrible Yelp reviews or whatever about the store. But after my office manager explained everything to him, he took my side and allowed me to take a 30 to 45 minute paid break so I could calm myself. Our next story was posted by user DBD Player 13, titled All Over Some Baked Lays. So I went to the store today to get some groceries, and as I was in the chip aisle, this entitled mother was also there with her three to four kids, all appearing to be under six. They were running up and down the aisle, and I was baby wearing. I don't know what that means. I bent down to get the last bag of baked lays. As I was standing back up, one of the children ran right into me, and I almost fell with my baby. I said, hey, can you get your kids, please? She almost knocked me down. Entitled mother says, my precious baby wouldn't do that. And is that the last bag of lays? Oh, yes, it is. Give it to me. That's the only chips my children will eat. I'm sorry, but if you would have asked nicely, I would have. But since you're being rude, no thanks. I tried to walk away. Entitled mother then says, This lady stole my chips out of my cart. Someone come here. So the store manager comes in and goes, Ma'am, calm down. I was right here the whole time. She didn't take anything from you, and you if you don't stop, you will leave. Entitled mother says, I want to speak to the manager. This is ridiculous. Store manager says, I am the manager. Now please leave. Well, I never. And she left. Not very exciting, but I wanted to share. And our next story was posted by user Civvy Fox, titled, My Entitled Mother Made My Teacher Cry. So up until a few years ago, I told this story as a funny one because I benefited from the interaction, but now I realize my mum was being an entitled parent and could have handled things better. In fourth grade, I had a math teacher that took a month leave from school for medical reasons. 
During that time, our substitute taught us how to do mental math so we could get faster answers without having to mark our papers up so much so it could barely be read. The day our regular teacher came back from her leave, we were scheduled to take a test. It was maybe the third or fourth person done and placed my test in the drop box on the teacher's desk. I realized I had never put my name on the test and in full view of the teacher, pulled my paper back out and wrote my name on it. My teacher immediately gave me a zero saying, you didn't show any of your work so you must have cheated. I was understandably upset. When my mum asked how the test went and I told her, she flipped. She started calling the teacher all kinds of nasty things. Among them were tramp, rat idiot, worthless waste of space, a fat cow, and incompetent. My mum even said to my teacher should get fired and never be allowed to teach again. Eventually, my mum began silently fuming instead. I thought that would be the end of it. Wrong. The next day at school, my math teacher was called out of class for a phone call, and when she came back, she was bawling her eyes out and couldn't even teach, she was so worked up. The class was just kind of silent, and when she finally calmed down, she told me that she would regrade my test. When I got home from school, I asked my mum what she said to my teacher because she was crying. My mum wouldn't tell me beyond exactly what she deserved, and just laughed for a bit. This isn't the first time she had went entitled parent on someone, but it is one of the more distinct memories that I have of it happening. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Tell me what you think of it down in the comment section below. Yes, we are back to normal episodes, and yes, it has taken me two weeks to move into a new place and get set up completely. My goal is to have two half-hour episodes a day, every day. If I can't do that, that's fine because I probably will have a job soon. But hey, let's revive this channel a bit. Um, I'm going to be opening up a second channel doing Reddit content of memes like I used to be doing. And I'll be posting those videos on this channel until that second one reaches a thousand subscribers. Anyway guys, tell me what you thought of this video today. Tell me what you think of anything at all. And I hope you have a good day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.